Hi, I'm Paul, also known as the Elk Net. What we're going to talk about today on this clip is chuckles and grunts. And we're even going to throw some lip balls in, just to uh, make it a little bit more exciting. Chuckles and grunts, that's the biggest question that I have uh, through phone calls, emails, and even on, on some of the forums uh, over the years. That is the most difficult sound, or those two are the most difficult sounds to make for most elk hunters. And what's interesting is it's a sound that you should really be trying to understand what it sounds like and what you're hearing in the woods as to try to incorporate it into your calling. So it's much more important to understand what you're hearing in the woods with that particular sound than it is to become a perfectionist with it. When you're talking about grunts and chuckles, there's two things that really separate them apart. On grunts, you're going to notice that they're much more boisterous. Sometimes they're even growly grunts. And there's a lot of other sounds that can accompany that grunt as far as an intimidation or a challenge to another bull. To stay away. Don't come any closer or else. Chuckling is the opposite. Its volume is much, much lower. The volume of, of a chuckle never gets to the heights of a grunt or that hair raising sound when you hear a grunt it's like whoa this dude is ticked see chuckles don't do that it's more of an invite or asking other elk to come your way many times you'll hear chuckling when a bull is talking to his cows or maybe you've cow called and you've gotten in close you're 100 yards away 150 yards away and you're cow calling and cow calling being persistent and a bull is trying to call you to him he's using chuckling in order to, we'll start with a grunt. In order to make a grunt, I'm using the Raging Bull. You can use about any mouth reed out there. I like using a single reed, a little bit of tension. Is you're going to do it similar to you would do a cow sound. You're going to go, yeah, yeah, for a cow sound on a grunt or even a chuckle. You're going to go, you, you. So you're kind of throwing that, oh, in. You're not just uh, making no sound at all. You're trying to create that, and so when you do it with a reed, so you can see I showed you the difference between a cow and a bull sound, and how much easier it is when you start trying to throw in a syllable or a sound to it like that. So if you're going to do it through a tube, and when you're doing a grunt, you notice how I hesitated. My tongue is hitting the latex and actually snapping off of it. So I'm hitting the latex, creating the tension, throwing voice inflection into it, and my tongue is going, and I'm releasing it real quick. The faster I do it or slower I do it, you're going to get... So you see, you can regulate how often you want your tongue to touch that in creating, and this is more of a grunt when you see the hesitation. So you see how I'm just throwing some voice into it, and then you can hear me inhaling, giving it, and then throwing the next one. So I'm inhaling. Just like a bull would do. Instead of just going, I'm inhaling. So very important to give it the more natural sound if that's what you're trying to create, if you're trying to be intimidational toward a herd bull or whatnot. So that's how I'm doing the grunt. And so it would kind of give, if a bull is getting really ticked off and angered, you might hear him give a, so you see he's, he can mix it up like that you notice the anger and the frustration and stay back chuckling has none of that added to it so when you're trying to decide what you're hearing out there remember those things the chuckling is much more lower in volume doesn't have that intimidation value to it and the chuckle is more of a 
<laughs> you see the big difference? Big difference. More ape-like in sound, and there's a lot of varieties of them, from the age of the bulls to the more mature bulls, young to old. It makes a big, big difference. There's no one set of chuckles, just like there's no one set of grunts. They can all mean the same thing. All series of chuckles mean the same. All series of grunts mean the same. So here's what uh, different variations of a chuckle that you could hear in the woods or you could produce yourself. <laughs> You've heard bulls do that little bit of a, of a chuckling like that. You notice how much lower in volume it is. I'm just throwing a little variety out, but that's what you're looking for in a chuckle. Much more rapid, and you don't hear a lot of the voice inflection being sucked in. Like in a grunt, you're hearing the <gasps> You don't hear that on a chuckle. It's much more rapid. And so they're giving you more of that. <laughs> you see, you're getting it more like that. A lot of times they'll just chuckle back during your cow calls. Or you bugle and the bull chuckles because he's trying to gather his cows together. He wasn't bugling to you. He's bugling because of you. And so you're listening for those things. You know, oh, automatically you know it's a herd bull. But the point is, is you're listening for those strange little uh, quick uh, sounds, such as a chuckle. <coughs> What you're looking for. See, they make all those little sounds. Again, depending on the matureness or the age of the bull, he can get much more healthier or, or coarse in his sound of his chuckle, but they still all run together. And that's the difference between a chuckle and a grunt. And so it's easier to identify when you can see that some are menacing in sound in addition to a grunt, where the lack of the menacing sound is administered toward the chuckles, whether it's trying to invite or call you his way or gather his cows. Big difference. Now, just to throw the lip balls in because it's a fairly simple sound and we can do all this at the same time. A lip ball, you're going to give it that just like if you're going to blow a trumpet. That's how guys blow a trumpet. They give it that and they blow into their trumpet. They're a real small hole. What's nice about the chuckler, if you'll look, look at the size of that hole. Inch and a half is way too big. One inch, to me, way too small for most diaphragm users. This is one and three sixteenths to one and a quarter. It's almost the absolute perfect size so that when you're trying to use a mouth read, it has, you're not losing a lot off the peripheral or it's so small that it's interfering with your lips. When you're given any, time of, any kind of a bugle, and especially a lip ball, you want to plant your upper lip right here. But you never let it touch your bottom lip. If, it, if, if at any time that bugle touches your bottom lip, it will stop the action that it's trying to do and throw your sound off. It'll mess you up. In other words, you're doing something like this. The minute I hit that bottom, it, it, it stopped it. And even though I was trying to create that tone, the same with the lip ball. You see how I killed it? If I would have just maintained the pressure with my top lip and leave my bottom lip from being uh, bothered by this bottom of the tube, then I would have had a, a solid lip ball going out. But what you're doing with the lip ball is you're, is you're just touching your tongue. In my case, I love doing the center of the tongue. The tip of the tongue or front portion works as well. But you're giving it that. You see what I mean? So, it can start in the front of a bugle or after you've created the scream. Not trying to get fancy, just trying to show you how to make that sound. Not trying to get big either. I want you to understand how it's being used. You see? The minute I open my lips up, I stop and gets into the pitch. The minute I close them back and give it that 
and let my tongue hit the latex and it vibrates it. I'm not pushing real hard. I'm pushing just enough so their latex is giving it that and that's what you're trying to do. Almost like you're doing a growl. So you see, I'm actually vibrating the latex and when I throw that along with it, instead of just getting the growl, you see, that is what you're trying to do for a lip ball. And again, a lip ball is, a, once again, for a bull who's trying to maintain contact with his cows, or he's trying to call another one, or another bull responds to him, and he's trying to bring the herd together. And he'll give lip balls very, very quickly. The more cows he has, the more spread out, the more lip balls he'll give inside of one or two minute span, urgently trying to get him together before a bull he's heard in the... Uh, in the distance is on him. So, and it's a good one that you're going to use when you're trying to call cows from another bull. Lip balls are used in those situations, but you get an idea of how the lip balls made and the grunts and the chuckles. Hope this helps you out. Thank you.